Chapter 41 Despair The beautiful sky-blue eyes turned as cold as the frozen sea as Hui Yu ran towards the stage on which Gao Yan lay, blood flowing from his abdomen. Minutes before had been the start of the first quarterfinals match. Gao Yan had been filled with positive energy as he jumped onto the now blood-soaked stage. Gao Yan's opponent had been Li Xing, the second cultivator who was a nine-star disciple. Every spectator had expected this fight to be the most thrilling, the most nerve-wracking display of all the quarterfinals. However, it had ended within mere minutes. Nurses! Someone finally yelled, breaking free from the daze. The referee's face was pale and green specks of light appeared on his hands. This man was a Grand Master-ranked cultivator with wood elemental affinity. This Grand Master was, however, not specialized in healing humans, so he could not perform any serious procedures. Still, he managed to stop the bleeding as both friends and teachers made their way onto the stage. The wrong twins were both pale. All color had left their faces as their eyes were glued to the puddle of blood. Although Gao Yan was no longer bleeding, the puddle below him alluded to the fact that he had lost a considerable amount of blood already. His life was at risk. While the wrong twins were focused on Gao Yan, Hui Yu narrowed his eyes as he looked at the complacent Li Xing. His eyes were wide open and alert as he looked around the bustling stage. Within these alert eyes was a certain amount of disdain and ridicule every time his eyes hovered on the now unconscious Gao Yan. From the start of the fight till the finish, Li Shang had only used one attack. This attack seemed to be a middle-ranked Grand Master skill. Although this was not as rare as the high-ranked skills, it was definitely not something to laugh at. This particular martial arts attack skill created a chi whip. This whip was as sharp as any sword and agile. The biggest problem, while the attack was fierce and intense, it quickly lost its usefulness if the opponent was to use his chi defensively. This downside had caused Li Xing to immediately go all out, lashing out and cutting deeply into Gao Yan's abdomen, severely injuring him in the process. The nurses had now arrived. While one of them focused solely on healing the wound, the others slowly moved the wounded Gao Yan onto a stretcher, after which they ran towards the temporary infirmary tent. What do you think? Deng Wu asked Hui Yu with a low voice. It was obvious that while the wrong twins were filled with grief and worried, Deng Wu and Hui Yu were the ones who took an overview of the situation together with Ma Kong. As soon as Hui Yu saw the injury, he had sent Ma Kong to send a message to Lord Rong Liang containing the recording of the video. The reason Hui Yu had chosen to send a message to Lord Rong Liang was that the city lord had personally taken in Gao Yan. Whether or not he survived was still a question. It would fall to the Lord to inform the parents. It was possible for him to win without causing such grave injuries, Hui Yu answered with a low voice. He still looked at Li Xing, who was smiling happily, as if he had done nothing wrong. Let us hope his next opponent is me, Hui Yu said with a sinister gleam in his eyes. I would love to return the gratitude he has shown Gao Yan. After saying this, Hui Yu turned around and walked briskly towards the infirmary, closely followed by Deng Wu. He will survive, stated the nurse who was currently inspecting the wound on Gao Yan's abdomen. His dantian is broken, but he will have a life as a cripple, the nurse said coldly, and she quickly removed her hands from the wound, stopping her healing, which caused the blood to start flowing once again. Can you repair his dantian? Hui Yu asked as he walked through the tent. The young boy was followed by Deng Wu, a boy who was both older and had a much more intimidating background. The speaker, Hui Yu, was a ten-year-old boy who acted as if he was in control. Listen, little boy, the nurse said with disdain as she looked at Hui Yu. This is a commoner boy. Although I am able to repair his dantian, who will be able to pay for it? Hearing her comments caused great displeasure to arise within all present. Hui Yu was the first to react as he withdrew three spirit coins from a memory stone which he threw at the face of the nurse. 
Repair his dantian, and never again show your face in front of me! Huiyu hissed with undisguised contempt within his voice. A sudden gust of cold wind entered the tent and sent shivers down the spine of the woman. The gust of the wind on top of the cold voice and disdain within the ice-blue eyes caused the woman to feel an uncontrollable fear. The nurse was shocked. She had just been threatened by a ten-year-old boy. He was obviously within the student rank. Despite that, he managed to cause her to feel fear from deep within. She, who was a grand master-ranked cultivator. Picking up the coins, the nurse quickly shook off the fear, and instead gave her all to heal the dungeon of Gao Yan. I'm back, Ma Kong said breathlessly as he entered the tent. Rong Ming and Rong Jing were, if possible, even paler now than they had been before. Even Deng Wu was pale, as he did not even attempt to use this opportunity to get closer to Rong Jing. Deng Wu was standing patiently behind Hui Yu as he watched the green specks of life entering Gao Yan's abdomen. His dantian is broken, Hui Yu explained, his eyes never once leaving the nurse. We are currently healing it. Unfortunately, his chi has already dispersed, and so he will need to cultivate from the beginning again. Hearing this, a glint of black killing intent flashed through Ma Kong's eyes as he knew what this meant. Do not worry. Hui Yu assured Ma Kong, while still coldly observing everything which was done. I will help Gao Yan establish his cultivation base so that he will not suffer too great a setback. Hearing this caused a bit of color to return to the faces of everyone present. Although Hui Yu had many secrets, he had never acted the way he did today. He was no longer responding as a small child, but as an adult who seemed to be taking responsibility for the entire group. Hour after hour passed as Hui Yu and the others stood guard in front of Gao Yan. During these hours, the nurse worked hard and used up her entire capacity of chi. Finally, the last speck of green light disappeared. The nurse collapsed to the ground, sighing deeply in exhaustion. Uh. Sounds arose from the previously unconscious Gao Yan as he slowly woke up. What happened? he asked groggily as he rubbed his eyes. A feeble feeling of utter uselessness had overtaken his body. Your dantian was destroyed, Hui Yu said straightforwardly, shocking everyone present. It has been repaired, but you will need to redo your cultivation all over again. After hearing this, an ugly expression appeared on Gao Yan's face, but it only lasted for a minute before it changed to shock. Why would they waste their time to repair my dantian? I am nothing but a commoner, he asked quizzically. He looked at the exhausted nurse who was currently seated in meditation on the floor in front of them. Hui Yu paid for the healing, Deng Wu bluntly stated, causing a wave of gratitude to sweep over Gao Yan. I have some things to explain. Let us head back to my courtyard, Hui Yu said quietly as he turned around to start walking. Although Gao Yan was feeling feeble and currently with no cultivation base, it was still possible for him to walk to the courtyard. He no longer had any injuries within his body, as the nurse had done a perfect job of healing his body. The six people were moving at a slower pace than usual. Nevertheless, they still moved as a group. Hui Yu was walking at the front with Deng Wu on one side and Ma Kong on the other. Gao Yan and the Rong twins were right behind him, following at the fastest speed possible for Gao Yan. On the way towards the residential mountaintops, Hui Yu took a small trip away from the group as he went to the medicinal pill outlet. None of the students knew why, and Hui Yu said nothing as to what he was doing. The only one who seemed to understand him was Deng Wu, who also kept quiet. Returning to Courtyard 1009, Hui Yu went to his room, where he put down his student emblem and made the others do the same. Why do we need to remove the student emblems? Rong Meng asked curiously, as he did what he was told. The emblems are capable of recording everything they see, Hui Yu said matter-of-factly. What I am about to tell you is something no one else can never know about. This includes your families and your friends. Upon hearing this, curiosity arose within all the friends. 
they swiftly placed down every memory stone they were wearing. This included the storage stones and message stones as well. One couldn't be too careful. After leaving behind their memory stones, everyone moved outside the courtyard, where they sat down beneath the tree in a circle. As you most likely all noticed, I have some secrets which I did not feel like explaining before. I now feel like I need to tell you. Hui Yu took a deep breath before continuing. When I was walking around in the magical forest, I came across the tomb of an ancient expert. Hui Yu had edited the story slightly, as he knew they would have trouble understanding the initial story. His initial story was the one thing that only Deng Wu knew. The soul of this extreme expert was sealed within a magical item. When I touched it, the soul entered my body. The two of us are now sharing a body. After each word Hui Yu said, their eyes widened until they were so large that they could no longer open them any further. This expert is helping me increase my cultivation, and is teaching me various high-ranked attack skills to improve my ability to survive. Ma Kong gaped for a bit before he started laughing. You are Li Fen, he said between the laughter. As soon as he said this, the others suddenly realized that this was the case, and an expression of veneration appeared within their eyes. Hui Yu just smiled, neither confirming nor denying the statement. Instead, he pulled out a large case created from jade, which he placed in front of Gao Yan. These are qi congregating pills, Hui Yu said as he opened the jade case and revealed a hundred pills. Take them he said as he pushed them to Gao Yan. I am going to give you a cultivation method, Hui Yu continued while looking at the now crippled Gao Yan. This cultivation method is not creating qi as pure as mine and Wang Zhulong's, Hui Yu explained, but it will give you slightly higher quality qi than you had before, which will allow for quick cultivation. As Hui Yu said that, Lan Feng moved within the Danshan cave. He quickly took over Hui Yu's body. A finger was quickly pressed against Hui Yu's smooth, childish forehead, and a silvery light shone. This light stayed on the pale finger as it was quickly placed on Gao Yan's forehead. The light shone brilliantly before entering his head. Included within this transference was a cultivation method which Lan Feng had gained somewhere back when he was still the Blue Phoenix. It was known to be a decent cultivation method those four thousand years back, but it was far superior in speed to the one Hui Yu had been using. Cultivation methods were methods which determined how the user gathered the essence and refined it into qi. These methods were what built one's foundation. Although it was possible to change the cultivation method during the period of cultivating, usually it was not beneficial, but harmful. If the qi that was within a Danshan cave was of different qualities, then it was highly likely that the qi would be unbalanced, which would cause severe damage to the cultivators themselves, as well as make the martial arts skills unbalanced and unreliable. Some qi was purer than others. Two types of purity would not be able to work together. Having two types would cause the skills to either fail to activate or their outcome to be unknown, whether it would be strong from the pure qi or less efficient from the less pure qi. Gao Yan, this cultivation method and the hundred qi congregating pills are a gift from me to you. The rest of you I will also give a high-ranked martial arts skill so that you can defend yourself in the future. I will not allow for my friends to be hurt. Hearing everything which Hui Yu had said, and having seen how he treated Gao Yan, instantly caused the five others to tear up. Giving away a high-ranked martial arts skill was not something people would do unless they truly valued the recipient. Ma Kong was the first who made a slight cut on his finger, which he then forced a few drops to leave the cut. I, Ma Kong, from the Ma family... At this moment swear an oath by blood that I will never mention what happened today to anyone other than us five present. As the words left his mouth, a blood-red world seemed to appear as the drops of blood which he had squeezed out turned golden and forced their way back into the body. 
seeing Ma Kong invoking a blood oath, caused the wrong twins and Gao Yan to nod with a grave expression before they too followed suit. One blood curtain after another appeared within Hui Yu's small courtyard as they all swore the blood oath to never reveal what had occurred on this fateful afternoon. Chapter 42 Four High-Ranked Attacks As soon as the blood oath was finished, Gao Yan moved to a corner of the courtyard where he could start cultivating once again. Hui Yu was aware that the cultivating methods taught to him by Lan Feng were very different from the ones that were currently used on this continent. At first, Hui Yu learned that to cultivate, his hands must form the bird's seal. In the beginning, Hui Yu thought that this was purely for the sake of Lan Feng, since he was a bird. But the last few years, Hui Yu had learned that these hand signs would connect the cultivator to the twelve zodiacs and allow for speedier cultivation. Hui Yu had found it rather funny when he realized that the hand seal of the bird had connected him to the rooster. This connection caused Hui Yu to think that Lan Feng truly was a chicken. Although the cultivation method which relied on the rooster was not the strongest of all methods, it was by far the best for Hui Yu, as his soul was connected to Lan Feng. The different cultivation techniques that Lan Feng owned relied on the twelve zodiacs. One could connect to the zodiacs in a variety of ways. The stronger the cultivator's connection with the zodiac, the more efficient that cultivation technique would be. Currently, Hui Yu's soul was connected to Lan Feng, who in turn was the descendant of the Vermilion Bird, the sovereign of all birds. This relationship caused the compatibility between Hui Yu and the rooster cultivation technique to be strengthened by unbelievable heights. The cultivation method which Hui Yu had passed along to Gao Yan was connected to the zodiac of the dog. Although it was not able to give the results Hui Yu had achieved, it was far above the cultivation methods which relied on the heavens and the earth alone while ignoring the zodiacs. Hui Yu also sat down to meditation for a while. During meditation, he communicated with Lan Feng to find the most beneficial attacks for each of his friends present. To think you actually told them, Lan Feng said as he was considering which skills to give. At first, Lan Feng had shown significant disagreement with Hui Yu's decision about just giving away these skills. Nevertheless, he agreed after realizing how worried Hui Yu had been when Gao Yan was bleeding to death, while he could do nothing to help. Hui Yu was not a person who considered himself to be fair nor did he particularly concern himself with this world. In this new world, however, there were a few individuals who had treated him with great care and attention. Hui Yu was an individual who returned the kindness he received. He stood by that belief now. Hearing the truth caused the others to feel slightly hesitant. They realized that Hui Yu had shared his biggest secret with them. He laid everything out in the open, without requiring anything in return. It was only natural for them to swear a blood oath. I've got it, Lan Feng said with excitement as he slowly merged with their shared body. Hui Yu settled down within the Danchen Cave as a mental projection. You there, Lan Feng said through Hui Yu's mouth, causing all those present to jolt in surprise. Lan Feng was currently pointing at Rong Ming. The young twin slowly stepped towards the boy-turned-saint beast. Once again, a flash of light appeared as Lan Feng withdrew a strand of light containing a high-ranked martial arts skill, which he then placed on Rong Ming's forehead. This is Slashing Qi. It is a low, king-ranked martial arts attack skill. It allows you to solidify qi into a blade, which moves according to your desire. It slashes through any defense. It is not the blade of a sword, but a blade of qi. You cannot hold it, but it moves at your command. Every word Lan Fang said caused the others to pant slightly, and their eyes shone with excitement. 
This skill was, without a doubt, a rare high-ranked martial arts skill, which did not have any tough requirements for the cultivator to overcome. Rong Ming, who received the skill, was shocked as the knowledge came flooding into his mind. It was as though the floodgates had been left ajar while the flood swept through, spreading through his meridians and finally resting in the Qi Cave. The skill felt so familiar to Rong Ming. He was completely engrossed in his own world as he moved to a quiet place in the courtyard where he immediately started to train. The next was Rong Jing. She received the floating Qi Fan. This skill was a fan that Rong Jing could move by thought. If her qi was of high enough quality, she could use the fan as a means of gliding through the air. Floating qi fan was also a low king-ranked martial arts attack skill. Ma Kong looked at Rong Jing as she moved towards another empty place in the courtyard. Her eyes were deep in thought as she analyzed the imprints and qi patterns of the martial arts skill. The next skill was given to Ma Kong. It was a middle king-ranked martial arts attack skill, which went by the name of Exploding Chi Flowers. Just as the name suggested, it allowed for Ma Kong to create flowers from his chi strands. These flowers could be thrown, after which they would explode with a thought. It was a skill with the most potential. Out of all the skills which had been given out so far, Hui Yu felt that it truly fit Ma Kong the best. Although Hui Yu shared these skills with his friends, the skills were still kept within Lan Fang's head. He would easily pass them on to Hui Yu should he need them in the future. As soon as Ma Kong had received the skill, his expression was filled with astonishment. Then, after a certain amount of stubbornness appeared, he moved towards the only corner that was left in the courtyard. Here he sat down and closed his eyes in meditation. He decided to analyze it thoroughly before he attempted to create any flowers. Now it is just the two of us, Dang Wu said with a smile as he observed the four focused youths who were practicing their skills. Hui Yu nodded in reply but said nothing as his eyes were focused on Gao Yan. A chill flashed through his eyes, causing Deng Wu to feel a shiver go down his spine. He did not wish to be Li Xing but even Deng Wu felt the older boy deserved the punishment that was coming to him. Currently, Lan Feng was back within the Danchen cave and Hui Yu back in his body. I already gave little dragon's friend the attack skill which most suited him, Lan Feng said while thinking, and Hui Yu nodded. Deng Wu already had a skill, so giving him another was not as important. Nevertheless, it seemed as though Lan Feng did not agree. I might not have trusted this guy at the start, but since Little Dragon accepted him, then he cannot be all that bad, the Blue Phoenix reasoned. Let us see if he is capable of learning Chi Guard. He has an attack skill, so let's give him a defensive skill this time. Hui Yu nodded in agreement. He too felt as if Deng Wu was trustworthy, albeit slightly dramatic and hard to see through. This time you teach him Qi Guard, Lan Feng said while yawning. It is quite exhausting to transfer knowledge from the mind. You have already perfected Qi Guard, so it is fine if he learns from you. Hearing this, Hui Yu raised an eyebrow slightly before he waved Deng Wu closer. I have a skill for you, he said and closed his eyes. But you are learning it from me rather than Lan Feng. Hearing this caused Deng Wu to become awestruck. Lan Feng would only allow Hui Yu to train the best skills. Little Dragon had spent a very long time telling Deng Wu about Lan Feng's perfectionism and stubbornness. This perfectionism showed that the skill Deng Wu was about to learn was nothing about which to joke. Hui Yu grumbled slightly as he scurried through his brain, looking for all the information he had about Qi Guard. This information gathered itself into a ball of light, which Hui Yu slowly withdrew from his forehead. This ball was larger than the ones Lan Fang provided. Hui Yu was unable to perfectly separate the Qi Guard attack skill from his knowledge about the skill. Gaining the knowledge, on the other hand, was a benefit for Deng Wu. It would make training easier. 
It would also end up causing Deng Wu to train the skill the exact same way Hui Yu had. This would, in turn, narrow down the possibilities of evolving the skill. Qi guard, Deng Wu said, shocked, as he finally completely understood the skill which Hui Yu had been using to defend against Wang Zhulong's Qi lightning. Deng Wu was astounded as he understood the skill, even more so when he realized that this skill had been perfected by a person who had lived for a mere ten years. Deng Wu, unlike the others, did not immediately start training. Instead, he observed the others for a while before he finally started practicing his dancing chi pillar. This skill he had previously been given by Hui Yu. Dang Wu had heard from Hui Yu how important it was for Lan Feng to perfect one skill before he would start practicing another. The older boy had decided to follow suit. Having laid everything bare in front of his friends caused Hui Yu to feel alleviation. Hui Yu had felt indebted to the wrong twins from an early age. Everyone within the courtyard was someone Hui Yu trusted a hundred percent. Watching Deng Wu practice caused a smile to appear on Hui Yu's face before he, too, submerged himself in practicing transforming weapons, the sword version. The six youths remained within the courtyard the entire time. Only once did the gate open. That was when Lord Rong Liang showed up to see Gao Yan's injuries. Lord Rong Liang's expression was stern. He had required the Academy to investigate as to whether or not the damage could be considered an accident. Yet Gao Yan stopped him. Within the day, Gao Yan had already managed to reach the second star of the student rank, and his current quality was slightly better than it had been before. Gao Yan was quick to understand that although he had lost his cultivation base, this new cultivation technique would allow him much better future prospects. Upon seeing Gao Yan's current cultivation base, Lord Rong Liang was fairly shocked and asked multiple questions. No matter how much he asked, Gao Yan refused to answer. Eventually, Rong Liang could do nothing but shake his head. He left the courtyard, allowing the six youngsters to return to their training. Finally, the day arrived, and it was time for Hui Yu to fight once again. The semifinals consisted of the fights between Hui Yu and a commoner who had won in Group 3, while Li Xing was up against Wang Zhulong. A complicated feeling was finding its way into Hui Yu's heart. Everything he had done this entire tournament was for the sake of his fight against Wang Zhulong. The current enmity between Hui Yu and Li Xing was something that by far outweighed his feelings of rivalry towards Wang Zhulong. Hui Yu did not value his pride as something more important than gaining revenge for a friend. Still, Wang Zhulong was not weak. She might be a woman, but her achievements were, without a doubt, nothing to laugh at. Looking at Wang Zhulong, Hui Yu noticed that she was looking at him while walking towards him. Win, she said as she reached Hui Yu. Win your fight, and I will be waiting for you in the finals. Any scum who seriously wounds their schoolmates deserves no respect. Within her brown eyes, he saw determination and coldness. Hui Yu nodded in reply. Even Wang Zhu Long was willing to take revenge for Gao Yan. In that case, Hui Yu had nothing to worry about. As Hui Yu stepped onto the stage, he saw that his opponent was a commoner, one of Gao Yan's followers. Hui Yu's opponent's face was twisted with rage and hate, yet the emotions were clearly not aimed towards Hui Yu, but Li Xing, who was standing just next to the stage. I forfeit! The young man yelled into the air, shocking everyone present. As he was on his way down the stairs, he walked by Hui Yu. Placing a hand on Hui Yu's shoulder, he whispered, If Li Xing gets to the finals, make sure that he does not walk off the stage ever again. Chapter 43 Revenge The last battle before the finals had yet to be decided. The atmosphere within the arena was more intense than it had been before. A certain degree of expectation was left unsaid throughout the air. The first of the semifinals had ended in a shocking yet anticlimactic result. The realization that a semifinalist would forfeit from the start was unexpected, 
These commoners partaking in this tournament all relied on their winnings to feed their families. Spending some time to think it through made the situation that much more shocking. It was obvious that the commoner had forfeited for the sake of getting revenge on Li Xing. However, there was another reason for surprise. Hui Yu was a mere nine-star student-ranked cultivator, and yet a late-ranked disciple stepped back, trusting a boy within the lowest realm of cultivation to take that revenge for him. At first they thought this cultivator had stepped down for the sake of allowing Wang Zhu Long and Hui Yu to end their feud, of which everyone present had noticed long ago. Looking at these two students from below the stage was Wang Zhu Long, the child prodigy of the Wang family, who had managed to defeat the top-seeded Rong Ming. To defeat Rong Ming, one could expect that Li Xing would also fall to the ten-year-old boy. Others mused that Wang Zhu Long only won against Rong Ming because of the older boy's inattentiveness. It was unlikely that Li Xing would fall for the same trick. Considering the attack he had used against Gao Yan, it was highly likely that Wang Zhu Long would become seriously injured with the first exchange of techniques. The two young students were both standing on the stage, in front of each other, while waiting for the judge to appear. Today, as it was a semi-final match, the judges were Royal Academy elders. These elders were important figures, not only within the academy, but also within Riloa City. The elder today was one of the youngest elders who was assigned to the Riloa City Royal Academy. His name was Chin Sang, and so far Hui Yu had a good impression of the middle-aged man. Chin Sang had become an elder a year prior when he had reached the duke rank and immediately decided to join the city lord's faction like the majority of elders within the royal academy. Lord Rong Liang was, after all, appointed to his position by the royal family. Let the battle begin! Chin Sang's voice roared through the filled arena. Every sound vanished as everyone's full attention focused on the two youths standing on the stage. As soon as the voice sounded, the wind started to blow throughout the entire area. It quickly picked up speed as it rushed towards Wang Zhu Long, forming the now familiar hurricane of protection around her body. Wang Zhu Long's eyes narrowed. She kept looking at Li Xing, awaiting the sudden slash which would be aimed at her, yet nothing happened. Retreating step by step and providing space between the two was the only thing that Wang Zhu Long could do while she waited for her qi lightning bolts to charge and grow in size, stacking them up around her body. Suddenly the flash of white, lusterless qi appeared, rushing towards the distant Wang Zhu Long. Fortunately, Wang Zhu Long had not allowed her attention to slack. Immediately, two balls of chi lightning shot out from the safety of the hurricane and slammed straight into the lusterless slash which was aiming for her. A thunderous boom rang out within the arena, blowing a violent wind from the point of impact. Wang Zhulong sucked in the wind to become a part of her defense, causing her hurricane to whirl around her at astonishing speed, her figure blurring in the middle. An unsightly expression appeared on Li Xing's face as he recreated his qi whip. The previous one had been utterly destroyed when colliding with the qi lightning bolts, yet no expression of defeat could be seen on his face. The same scene appeared once more as the lackluster white qi shot towards Wang Zhu Long. Two qi lightning balls exited the safety of the hurricane. Booms filled the air but unlike last time, the whip managed to survive and continued its path towards Wang Zhu Long. The current Wang Zhu Long was hidden within the hurricane, so no one was able to see her expressions. Still, Hui Yu could sense a feeling of annoyance. The hurricane had not been up for long enough to create a stockpile of Qi lightning balls, as each ball was used as soon as it had been created in the constant exchange of blows. Currently, Li Xing had an advantage which was evident to everyone. Li Xing had far more qi cultivated than Wang Zhu Long. He would run low on qi much later than Wang Zhu Long, causing the latter to grit her teeth as she removed her defending hurricane. I forfeit! Before she could finish the sentence, the whip arrived near her, causing her quickly to retreat. Fortunately, Wang Zhu Long had stayed alert. She reacted quickly as the whip was filled with an overbearing energy, promising to end Wang Zhulong's life had she not moved as swiftly as she did. 
Hui Yu's face darkened as he realized how close Wang Zhulong had been to dying. Anger welled up inside of him, together with his qi, which started flowing through his meridians unconsciously. On the stage, Wang Zhulong had escaped death. However, her body was filled with cuts. Blood oozed out from her arm where the muscles clearly had been severed. Just as Wang Zhulong opened her mouth, getting ready to forfeit once again, Li Xing unleashed another round of lashes which were brought down upon her, causing even more damage than last time. Her clothes were hanging in rags. Although the clothes were hanging in rags, they still managed to cover up her secret. Yet the beautiful blue fabric was quickly darkening as blood dyed it almost black. Blood was streaming down her face, blinding her. Blood was flowing freely from her body down to the floor, causing it to be slippery. Her right arm was almost severed completely with the white bone visible through the flesh. Once again, Wang Zhulong opened her mouth, trying to forfeit, but, just as before, Li Xing did his best to break up her words. This time, however, Wang Zhulong no longer had the energy to move, and she stood still, glaring at the man in front of her. Seeing this caused a chill to run down Hui Yu's spine as he leaped into the arena. Previously, when the qi had started flowing within his meridians, Hui Yu had unconsciously activated velocity flow, and his current movement was simply too fast for Li Xing to keep up with. Within a second, Hui Yu had landed on the platform, where he picked up Wang Zhu Long before he jumped off the stage. Everything happened so quickly that no one present was able to react to it. Hui Yu's velocity flow had increased in speed from the first time he had used it in the tournament. Hui Yu moved like the wind while he was saving Wang Zhulong. A clamor quickly spread throughout the arena. While some had faces of relief, others were confused, and there were also some filled with disappointment. What do you think you are doing? A voice roared out from the stage, causing Hui Yu to stop in his tracks and turn his head to see who was talking. He already forfeited, Hui Yu said, his eyes cold as a winter morning. You did not end the match when he forfeited. I should be the one asking you why you let the battle go on after someone forfeited. Hearing this caused the judge's head to turn red from anger. The judge was a part of the city lord's faction. He had hoped to seriously injure or cripple the genius from their greatest opponent. Seeing that Hui Yu, a mere child, had opposed the greater good for the city lord's faction made Chin Sang furious. Hui Yu always ran around with the wrong twins, not to mention that he had an erased past, courtesy of Lord Rong Liang. Everyone would have expected Hui Yu to just watch Li Xing injure or kill Wang Zhu Long. He never finished his statement. I demand an answer as to why you think a mere child like yourself may interfere. Chin Song felt humiliated by Hui Yu in front of all the nobles within Riloa City, no less. This interference was unacceptable, and he stared daggers into Hui Yu, who casually walked away, carrying Wang Zhu Long in his arms. Wait and explain yourself, the elder yelled once more, and Hui Yu did stop. His head once more turned towards Chin Sang. This time it seemed more like the face of a white rakshasa rather than an angel. Scum like you have no right to question me. Hui Yu said with his voice low and steady. It brought forth a heavy pressure which overwhelmed everyone present. This pressure was not something which Hui Yu had gotten from Lan Fang. This was the contempt which Hui Yu held for Li Xing and Qin Sang. Qin Sang felt as though he had been dropped into a frozen lake. His whole body started to tremble. Goosebumps appeared everywhere on his body as his heartbeat started to become erratic. Hate filled the elder as he felt pressured by a mere student-ranked cultivator, and he opened his mouth to utter a reply. You, you are disqualified, he yelled at Hui Yu as he continued to walk away. The young boy neither stopped, nor did he slow down on his way towards the infirmary. Who would have thought that it would end like this? Hui Yu said jokingly to the beat-up girl in his arms. To think that you are a girl, what a surprise! He continued, causing the body below him to become rigid. How do you know? She asked, becoming alert, clearly worried as to what would happen. Well, even if you are a girl, you really are incredibly flat. 
Hui Yu continued, as if he had not heard Wang Zhu Long's question. It was not before now that it dawned upon Wang Zhu Long that Hui Yu was carrying her like a princess. Unfortunately, one hand had gone astray, resting on her bandaged chest. You pervert! Wang Zhu Long exclaimed, her cheeks burning red, causing everyone close by to stare at her while giving them weird looks. Although Wang Zhu Long was in severe pain and bleeding all over, she still managed to blush at the previously stated comment. Don't worry too much, Hui Yu said while smiling at the girl in his arms. We will have a rematch next year. Having said that, Hui Yu noticed a gratified smile appear before he turned around and saw that Wang Jingshen and a group of people were rushing towards them. The people following seemed to be elders of the Wang family, and their faces were all white from worry and suppressed anger. Thank you, student, one of the elders said as they arrived next to Hui Yu. We will take it from here, he continued, and quickly grabbed Wang Zhu Long from the embrace of Hui Yu. A smile appeared on his face as he noticed how frantic these elders were, as if they feared that Hui Yu might notice their secret. I will leave the rest to you, honorable elders, Hui Yu said with a slight bow, which they returned with a nod, after which they quickly rushed towards the temporary infirmary. Hui Yu stood behind for a bit and watched them vanish into the distance. A few thoughts kept swirling around in his head, yet he could not make sense of them. With a deep sigh, Hui Yu turned around and walked back towards his friends with a complicated expression on his face. Chapter 44 Disqualified? As Hui Yu returned to the others, Deng Wu noticed his brows were furrowed and his blue eyes were looking far ahead, as though they saw a world unlike their own. At first all of them wished to ask about Wang Zhu Long. No one dared speak as soon as they saw the trans-like state Hui Yu was in. A weird tranquility was embracing this youth who slowly returned to reality. The dreamy faraway look in his blue eyes turned sharp, and the tranquility slowly entered his body, leaving behind no trace of the trance-like state. His friends all observed him with confusion evident in their eyes. Hui Yu smiled sheepishly. Sorry, he said with a mildly embarrassed voice. I was thinking about a few things. Did you say something? Saying this with an embarrassed and sheepish smile caused Deng Wu to snort at Hui Yu. He knew him all too well. Whenever the naive and innocent boy act appeared, it was obvious that Hui Yu had no desire to be questioned. With a slight laugh, Deng Wu shook his head and once again paid attention to the stage where Li Xing and Qin Sang were standing. These two were no longer alone. All the elders within the academy had gathered on the stage and were conversing quietly with each other. Finally, the academy chief straightened his back and moved forward. The winner of the semi-final is student Li Xing, he said. His voice was not raised even slightly, yet the sound boomed throughout the arena, echoing after each word. In five days, student Li Xing will fight against student Hui Yu in the final match. As soon as the words were spoken, a strange silence prevailed within the filled arena, with no one wishing to break it. Eventually, though, a few people cleared their throats and started applauding Li Xing for winning. The applause, however, started out with only a few adults before it slowly spread throughout the entire audience. Although Li Xing had shown an intent to kill Wang Zhu Long, it was obvious to the audience that Li Xing was indeed strong. Strong men deserved respect. Although the audience showed a friendly attitude towards this youth, no student within the arena applauded him. Everyone was in disbelief that he, twice in a row, considered killing his fellow schoolmates. Hui Yu turned around, without saying a word, and slowly walked away, heading towards his courtyard. Behind him were the five other youngsters, all of them quietly wondering what had happened to Hui Yu when he went to the infirmary with Wang Zhulong. Deng Wu especially looked at the younger boy before a thought arrived in his head, and he started giggling. The giggle managed to break back Hui Yu from his deep thoughts. He looked annoyed at the person laughing. Ever since Hui Yu had run into the elders of the Wang family, he had felt as though something was wrong. The elders were swift at removing the injured Wang Zhu Long from his embrace, 
It was obvious that the elders knew that the young master was actually a young lady. Their knowledge showed that it was a decision which had been made by the family. What made Hui Yu so unfocused was that just as the elder appeared and was about to take the young lady from Hui Yu's embrace, Hui Yu had felt Wang Zhu Long had grasped his clothes unconsciously, trying to stay with Hui Yu longer. The proud rival, Wang Zhu Long, had held on to Hui Yu as if she did not want to go with the elders. Something was off, Hui Yu thought with a sigh. For now, though, he could do nothing. A weird bond had been created between the two as they saw the other as a rival. These feelings were all new to Hui Yu. He kept sighing on the way back to his courtyard, not noticing that the five behind him had become only one. Rong Jing dragged her brother, Gao Yan, and Ma Kong towards her courtyard, where the four of them could cultivate together. The original plan had been to follow Hui Yu. This plan quickly changed as they noticed the thoughtful expression that kept appearing on his face. The reason that Rong Jing did not bring Deng Wu was that he kept smiling as if he had understood something which none of the others knew. So, did you figure out Wang Zhulong's secret? Deng Wu laughed as the two of them were within Courtyard 1009, and Hui Yu had paused. Upon hearing Deng Wu's question, Hui Yu finally turned around and lifted an eyebrow. You knew? Little Dragon told me, Deng Wu said while feeling smug looking at the younger boy's expression. Unlike what Deng Wu had expected, no confusion shone in his eyes. You knew she was a girl? Hui Yu asked Lan Fang. The Blue Phoenix laughed from within. I did tell you that you didn't need to worry about such a minor rival, Lan Fang said. Hui Yu snorted at the annoying bird-like creature within his chi cave. He looked at Deng Wu. I know she's a girl, he sighed as he sat down below his favorite tree and gestured for his older friend to sit next to him. What do you know about the Wang family? Hui Yu suddenly asked out of curiosity, as he craned his neck and looked at the autumn sky above. The Wang family used to be the city lords, Deng Wu started. This fact was something Hui Yu already knew. Eventually their economy began to slow down, and the city fell behind in paying taxes. At that point the royal family sent Rong Liang here and ordered him to take over as the city lord. The Wang family was granted space within the city to build their own family compound, and they were gifted a large sum of money to make up for them losing their job. This was news to Hui Yu, and he listened intently. Hui Yu started to understand why Wang Zhu Long was forced to live like a man. The Wang family still wishes to regain their former position, but it is not possible to go against a royal decree. If they were dumb enough to do so, they wouldn't be able to hold on to the position of city lord for more than a few days before the royal army would come and exterminate the whole family. Hui Yu nodded. Then it did indeed make sense. So the reason that they made her live as a boy is for the sake of proving that they have a more suited youngster than the city lord himself. As Hui Yu said this, he nodded his head again. This actually made sense. In the end, everything is just a theory, Deng Wu sighed as he leaned against the cold tree trunk and closed his eyes as he enjoyed the chilled air. After a few moments, Hui Yu started practicing transforming weapons, sword style. He was completely absorbed in training within a few minutes. He did not notice that the smiling Deng Wu no longer smiled, but instead watched Hui Yu with a complex look on his face. A deep sigh escaped Deng Wu's lips as he rose to his feet and walked towards the courtyard gate. Right before leaving, he turned around, and pain was evident in his eyes as he stepped out. There are certain things that you do not need to know, Deng Wu thought as he slipped away from the young boy's courtyard. A profound sadness was evident in his eyes, yet no one was there to see it. The next morning arrived, and before sunrise, Hui Yu was once again seated below his favorite tree and started refining strand after strand of essence into qi. As soon as he heard knocking on his front door, Hui Yu made a beckoning gesture, and the gate slowly opened, allowing passage for Deng Wu and the rest. The Rong twins, along with Deng Wu and Ma Kong, sat down in front of Hui Yu, waiting for him to wake up. 
They all had serious expressions on their faces as they patiently sat there, not once looking at anything else. The intense atmosphere caused mixed emotions to well up within Hui Yu. At first he was happy to see that his friends had no intention of disturbing him while he was cultivating. However, the intense staring caused Hui Yu to become curious as to what was so important that the five of them would sit and watch him in this way. Their well-meant intentions quickly caused Hui Yu's curiosity to win out. After a few minutes, he had refined the essence which he had previously gathered. What's wrong? he asked as soon as the chi thread had joined the rest of the swirl. We have been thinking, Rong Ming started. The cultivation technique that you gave Gao Yan. May we have something similar? Hope was evident on their faces. Even Deng Wu seemed to be quite interested as well, but Hui Yu had no other option than to shake his head no. Lan Feng had explained this to Hui Yu previously, as he too had asked this same question. Your current chi cannot handle a change in your cultivation method. Your only option is to empty your lower danshan and start cultivating all over. If you want the finest chi, you need to accept that it will most likely take you ten years to regain the rank you currently have. It might take even longer. After hearing this, the excited expressions slowly turned dim as they were slightly disappointed in the answer. I do have another way, though, Huiyu said slowly. I have quite a lot of spirit coins which were given to me by my teacher after she sold the high-ranked martial arts skills, Huiyu continued. I am going to purchase pills with them. Some of these pills will be the ones that further purify your already refined chi. If you take enough of these and work hard, then you should be able to break through the upper danshan without too much trouble when that time comes. Rong Jing and the others wished to decline the offer, yet getting free medicinal pills was simply too tempting for the lot of them. Excitement once again returned to their eyes as they listened to the younger boy's words. Although Hui Yu was five years younger, everyone viewed him as someone who had an immense knowledge about various things. The expert who resided within Hui Yu was able to lead this youngest one to be the one they went to every time they had problems. For this young boy to also offer free medicinal pills, all the friends swore to themselves that they would never let Hui Yu down. Even if he asked for them to join him in a suicide attack, none of them would say no after seeing how magnanimous he was. As soon as Hui Yu returned from the medicinal pill outlet and distributed medicinal pills to everyone present, he sat below his favorite tree. He once again fell into deep thought, and his eyes stared off into the distance. Hui Yu was not thinking about Wang Zhu Long, nor did he reflect on the tournament or why he got stronger, but thought of something else. Why do I feel such an overwhelming urge to kill every time I am in a fight? He contemplated as he asked Lan Feng. Is it your doing? he questioned. No, Lan Feng answered slowly before continuing. I'm not sure why you feel like this. I have to admit, even I find this killing intent within you to be incredibly strong. The phoenix sounded stupefied and confused about the whole thing. I think this killing intent which is locked inside of you might have something to do with why I felt such a strong connection with you back in your old world. This did make sense. Hui Yu had never killed a person before. From where would such an immense killing intent originate? It might be from a previous lifetime, Lan Feng mused. Considering that you have been forcefully reincarnated by yours truly, it is a possibility that some of your old personalities could resurface. Chapter 45 Breakthrough Another life? Hui Yu was dumbstruck as the words appeared within his mind. He had never actually considered the fact that he might not have always been Hui Yu. Perhaps this could be just one of his many incarnations? His previous life was the only life which he could remember anything about. Is it so shocking? Lan Feng asked, confused. 
Didn't I already explain it when we spoke about that girl of yours? When you die, your soul goes to the netherworld, in which it will wander around until all your memories are forgotten. By then, you will reincarnate as another person in another plane and begin another life. You did mention it, Hui Yu said. He finally started to understand just how heavy it would be if he suddenly were to remember his numerous lifetimes. This is what you are going to do to Li Fen, Lan Feng commented. You are going to drag out her memories from a previous incarnation forcefully. Are you sure that is what you want? Hearing this, Hui Yu could not help but feel startled. It was true that everything was due to his selfish desires. I know, he sighed, but I feel like it is incomplete. I am not resurrecting Li Fen with the expectation that she will suddenly love me. I just feel as if I need to tell her what my feelings truly are. I never had the chance to do so in my old life, but when I become strong enough, I can tell her. Should it turn out that she married and had kids long ago, I will resurrect her entire family and find a good place for them to live out their second life. Saying this caused Hui Yu to hurt inside, yet he was still firm in this decision. Hui Yu was perfectly well aware that Li Fen had never romantically looked at him. Still, he wished to tell her to get closure for himself. He needed it so he could move on. Should it go completely wrong with Li Fen getting furious at him, then he could always help her forget all the memories and start a new life as it had been originally planned. Thinking about all of this caused the previously curious Hui Yu to slump down, depressed by the thought of a furious Li Fen. Seeing this, Lan Fang snorted. Love did not belong in a world where only the strongest survived. Don't rack your little brain in worry yet, Lan Fang tried to console him. It will be an eternity before you reach the rank of God anyway. Until then you should enjoy youth and the lovely women around. I recommend you try and see what you can do with this cute little girl who pretends to be a man. She is not bad. Rong Jing, on the other hand, is quite the stunning lady, and she already has a favorable impression of you. Lan Feng continued to talk about the different girls at the academy for an extended period. Fortunately, Hui Yu had long since learned how to block out the annoying voice of the perverted bird, and he quickly returned to his training. If he were going to defeat Li Xing, he would need every single strand of qi that he possessed. His days of rest went by quickly. During this time, Courtyard 1009 was bustling with energy, as everyone present was either training or cultivating. Lan Feng made a training schedule for each of his friends. It was much like the one he had made Hui Yu half a year prior, just leaving out certain parts, such as fortifying the body. Gao Yan was cultivating like a madman. He did not sleep, nor did he eat anything apart from medicinal pills. Every time one medicinal pill had been eaten, he would practice his chi knuckle dusters until it had been integrated thoroughly. Then he would cultivate as usual, before once more relying on a medicinal pill to increase his cultivation base. This method, given to him by Lan Feng, had worked miracles. Gao Yan had already reached the sixth star student rank at a speed which caused great admiration and slight jealousy from everyone present, especially from Hui Yu, who painstakingly trained for ten years to reach that level. Although Gao Yan had reached a high rank within a short amount of time, he still did not have entirely pure qi like Hui Yu. His current qi was now much more refined than it had been before, yet the white strands were lackluster when compared to the younger boy's qi. This was the one thing which allowed the younger boy to keep his sanity. Hui Yu sighed as he stood up, allowing his tired body to stretch. He had finished a long night and early noon of cultivation, gathering the last few strands of qi before he now moved towards the arena. It was finally time for the final match of Reloa City's Royal Academy's tournament. One would have expected the young boy to show signs of nervousness or panic as he approached the arena, 
However, the closer Hui Yu got to the arena, the more oppressive the atmosphere around him became. At no time did Hui Yu believe that he would lose this match. This was the match in which he had to get revenge, not only for Gao Yan, but also for Wang Zhulong. That being said, although Hui Yu felt certain about his win, he also knew that Li Xing was no easy opponent, and his senses were as perceptive as they could be. His entire young body was taut and alert, observing and analyzing everything that was happening around him. The more Hui Yu thought about Li Xing and his deeds, the more his aura grew overbearing, so much so that eventually none of his friends wanted to stand next to him. The air was stifling and menacing, causing their hearts to beat erratically, and making it impossible to breathe easily. Today the judge was the academy chairman. This was due to the mishap which had occurred during the previous fight, wherein the judge had ignored Wang Zhulong's forfeit due to it being beneficial for his faction. The academy chairman had never entered a faction, nor had he ever bothered with anything like worldly possessions or ranks. This was the reason why he had been assigned to such a small side branch of the Royal Academy, rather than teach at the main branch of the Academy in the capital. As Hui Yu entered the stage, a murderous aura was emitting from him. This caused some of the students close by to gasp for air, while the audience all started mumbling amongst each other. To see such a young child produce such a thick, killing aura, one could easily see that he was anything but normal. Hui Yu, on the other hand, was being aggravated by the overwhelming killing intent. He used his focus to try and keep it down. He wanted to keep it in check and ensure that it would not flare up in the middle of the fight and cause Hui Yu to kill Li Xing or target his life. Although Hui Yu loathed Li Xing, he still did not wish to kill a fellow student. He knew that there was a strong possibility that he would lose to the bloodlust, which came from the very core of his soul. This bloodlust had turned into Hui Yu's biggest question. Hui Yu had the demeanor of a killer. The air around him was heavy and ice cold. His eyes were sparkling like frozen winter lakes. That overbearing aura was crashing against Li Xing as he stood on the other side of the stage. Slowly but surely, Hui Yu managed to reel in his killing intent. The previously hard-to-breathe air suddenly cleared up, as though a light breeze had blown from around the edges of the stage into the middle of the arena. Li Xing, who had been faced with such killing intent, showed no surprise on his face, nor was there any sign of fear or shock evident. The only thing visible was a smirk on his lips and seriousness which appeared within his eyes. He dared not look down on this student-ranked cultivator. Hui Yu, in turn, also allowed for his senses to envelop everything which was happening on the stage. Li Xing was not like any other opponent he had met before. The younger boy could not allow for a silly mistake, such as not paying enough attention to the young man in front of him, to be his downfall. With bated breath, Hui Yu allowed his qi to travel through his meridians, filling his entire body and allowing him to activate velocity flow as soon as the battle would start. Upon bending his knees, it was evident to everyone that Hui Yu intended to escape as soon as the battle began, but no one would blame him for doing so. Li Xing was obviously circulating his qi at the same time, allowing for a competition of speed. The academy chairman moved towards the stage, his steps unsteady and his speed slow. He was the personification of an ancient man. Hui Yu felt the profound strength which roared beneath his skin. He looked at the man with a degree of alertness. Let the final begin, he said with a voice that sounded old and weak, yet everyone within the entire academy heard every single word strike down like thunder in the quiet arena. As soon as the words had been said, a flash of white appeared. Li Xing once more opened the battle with a swift swing of his qi whip, testing whether or not his whip could catch up to the high-ranked movement skill which this youngster in front of him used. 
Although Hui Yu had high-ranked martial arts skills at his disposal, he was well aware that he was at a disadvantage, and with his senses strained to their limits, he managed narrowly to avoid the qi whip which came for him. Li Xing's face lit up while Hui Yu's darkened. Even though he had managed to escape the first attack, it was obvious that the qi whip had an overbearing power. Power was not the only problem that Hui Yu faced. The speed of the Chi Whip was equal to that of Velocity Flow, and just now, although Hui Yu had escaped the damage, his clothes had been brushed, which ended up shredding his shirt slightly. Looking at Li Xing, Hui Yu knew that it was impossible for him to keep thinking, and instead, he started randomly running around the stage while creating a copy. These two versions of Hui Yu were like a blur, flashing back and forth on the stage, dancing. They kept avoiding the chi whip, causing white slashes to appear everywhere one of the black blurs had been previously. While rushing around, Hui Yu summoned his two daggers, trying to get closer to Li Xing, so close that he could do some real damage to the opponent. Each time he tried, the chi whip was in the way, defending Li Xing. Gritting his teeth, Hui Yu felt his chi slowly diminishing, emptying his chi cave little by little. He knew that he had to do something. Dodging back and forth, continually causing Hui Yu's chi to be wasted, caused a big smile to appear on Li Sheng's face as he felt a victory coming his way. Still, he did not lower his guard, even a little. Instead, he tried to increase the speed at which he attacked with the chi whip. Hui Yu was swearing, as his entire focus was needed to avoid the Chi Whip, which in turn caused him to lose control of the killing intent that was slowly rising within his body. As the killing intent rose, that baleful aura once again started seeping out, causing Hui Yu to move faster than before. It also resulted in the Chi Whip slowing down. Unfortunately, the killing intent also caused Hui Yu's chi to decrease rapidly, and within moments only a few strands were left. A growl appeared within Hui Yu's throat, and he moved his palms to face each other. The few strands of chi were forced to flow around the meridians in the pattern which formed the fire spark skill. As the strands of chi floated past Lan Fang, the bird noiselessly lifted a hand, and a small drop of silver liquid fell from his finger into the chi thread, in turn allowing it to grow in size and change color to silver with a moon-like shine. Everywhere the silvery strand of chi passed within the body caused his blood to roar. Hui Yu's meridians were trembling as if they were struggling to stay together. Eventually, the strand exited his palms, exploding into a fire spark much bigger than any he had ever created. The fireball within his palms grew at such an incredible speed that it moved above his head where it consumed everything in the arena, instantly burning it to ashes. The wind picked up, causing the Chi Whip to become incapable of hitting Hui Yu, and instead moved towards the fireball where the Chi was absorbed, further adding to the fireball's growth. Suddenly, the ball could grow no further, as Hui Yu felt his very last strand of Chi being forced from his body. Suddenly, his killing intent soared to previously unknown heights. His blue eyes were cold and merciless like those of an evil-minded fiend. Without any remorse, Hui Yu threw the fireball at Li Xing, who was standing in the same arena. The moment the fireball left Hui Yu's hands, he felt his entire body start sucking up the essence between the heavens and earth, forcing itself to refine Qi at a never-before-seen velocity. Congratulations, Lan Feng said happily from within the dungeon. You are finally a disciple-ranked cultivator. Chapter 46 First Blood Hui Yu felt as though his body was breaking from within. Every muscle in his body was cracking and stretching, filling with strength. His bones felt as though they all broke at once, yet none of them were actually breaking apart. Instead, Hui Yu's body started to grow. A few centimeters were added to his height, while all of his muscles swelled. While Hui Yu still looked slightly feminine, he was now obviously a handsome young man. His muscles had much better definition than before. 
Still lean, they played beneath his jade-white skin. His good-looking face had become much more refined. The chiseled jawline allowed for the stubbornness within his ice-cold eyes to be projected into the outside world. The shoulder-length hair had grown so much that it now pooled on the floor, and the baleful aura which he had previously emitted was now perfectly concealed within, replaced by a tranquil facade. This change was as though someone had replaced the moon with the sun, and this sun was shining so brightly that everyone in the audience went silent as they observed the young man who was standing within the blazing flames. He was looking at them as though they proved to be no threat to him. Truthfully, these flames were no threat to Hui Yu, as they had been created by his chi and fortified with Lan Feng's spiritual energy. If one's own fire were to damage the cultivator, then every fire affinity expert would be in for a world of pain. This was, however, something which the audience did not know. It was evident to everyone present that Hui Yu had just broken into the rank of disciple, and he obviously had no way of using nor possessing spiritual energy. Seeing Hui Yu standing within the flames with his white hair billowing in the wind, his ice-cold eyes caused a shiver to run through everyone present. It felt like a premonition. This youth would make the world burn and the ground shake in terror. The tranquility which was currently being emitted from the boy was ten times more terrifying than his previous killing intent. The calmness which was shown on his face frightened everyone present as it clashed against the fierce aura from moments before. Within those ice-cold eyes was a small glint of the previous killing intent. Upon looking at the boy he seemed otherworldly, as though an angel had descended from the heavens. This tranquility was something which Hui Yu felt as he broke through into the disciple rank. In a corner of his lower dungeon, two small caves occurred, forming two small caverns. Inside one was a red mist full of hate and blood, while inside the other cave was a cloud of blue mist. This cloud was calmly floating around, giving the impression of gentleness. It was this cloud which Hui Yu had currently touched and allowed to float through his meridians, causing the aura to become one with him. Hui Yu looked at the sea of flames and furrowed his brows. The killing intent inside his danchen was raging, and a feeling of danger appeared within Hui Yu's mind. Dodging by instinct, Hui Yu noticed how the chi whip soared out from within the flames, followed by a heavily wounded person. Li Xing was heavily burnt. His eyes were filled with rage as he swiftly attacked Hui Yu. A flash of mercilessness appeared within Hui Yu's eyes, and the two daggers created by the newly refined Qi suddenly moved swiftly. That baleful aura had re-emerged. This time Hui Yu was too slow to suppress it. He was overwhelmed by a thirst for blood, a thirst to kill. His hands brought the two daggers towards Li Xing's neck, and without feeling the slightest resistance, Hui Yu suddenly felt a warm liquid spread across his hands. Shock filled the eyes of Li Xing as he plummeted to his knees, all the while blood sprayed from a cut on his throat. The two hands rose to grasp the wound. Before they were able to do so, the already kneeling student collapsed onto the floor. His life vanished into thin air. Everyone was silent as the fire raged on in the arena. Then, as if someone had planned a countdown, chaos broke out. Elders with the water affinity rushed to the grounds and used various spiritual arts to kill the fire. Extinguishing the fire took much longer than what they had expected. A slight fear crept into the hearts of these cultivators. These were no ordinary flames. They were still struggling to grow, as if this fire was created by spiritual energy. Hui Yu had stayed on the stage next to the now dead Li Xing, and behind him, observing quietly, was the academy chairman. It would be impossible for him to escape, so Hui Yu did not even attempt to do so. Inside of the youth, a roaring fight was ongoing. Two mental projections of Hui Yu were standing within the Qi Cave. One was covered in red mist, while the other was covered in a white cloud. A third Hui Yu, one with neither cloud nor mist around him, was seated by the cave wall next to Lan Feng. 
This third Hui Yu was observing the two copies of himself, discussing whether or not killing Li Xing was the right choice. What do you think? Hui Yu sighed while looking at Lan Fang, except the phoenix was staring blankly at the two discussing the issue within the Qi Cave. This is simply too weird, Lan Feng said. His eyes opened wide, the disbelief evident in his voice. Even if you remembered something from your previous life, it should not be possible for you to have three souls. I have three souls? Hui Yu asked curiously. Killing Li Xing was something which he had not wished to do. The end result was inevitable. One day he would need to kill. He did not believe in his ability to have won this battle had he not allowed for the killing intent to burst out and take over. Still, a shiver ran through his body as he remembered the feeling of cutting through human flesh, much like cutting through butter, followed by the feeling of warm blood which had drenched his hand. Ignoring these feelings, Hui Yu once again looked at the two versions of himself before he slowly clapped his hands, causing them both to be quiet. Killing him was the only option we had this time, Hui Yu said firmly. A smile then appeared on the red-misted Hui Yu, while a frown appeared on the white version. That being said, he continued, I do not wish to kill people unless there is no other option. This in turn caused the expressions on the two copies to switch, before they transformed into mist and slowly returned to their previous positions within Hui Yu. Hui Yu's consciousness walked back to Lan Feng, where he once more sat down. So, you were saying? he curiously asked as he slid down the chi wall. Currently, his outside self was seated in a meditational pose, seemingly adjusting his body to the breakthrough he had achieved. No one would interrupt a cultivator at such a critical time. Your soul has certain aspects that seem to have changed, Lan Feng said thoughtfully while his eyebrows were furrowed. These two are variations of your soul. But somehow I cannot sense them. They are not connected to me. How could this have happened? Hui Yu asked curiously, as he saw how the previously domineering mist had turned docile as if it was resting. It seemed that it would only activate when it was in battle. You are the only person I know who can make your soul undergo such an odd mutation. Lan Feng said, as if he did not believe it himself. We will not get an answer soon. One day you will know why you changed in such a way. We do need to practice how to control them, though. Having heard this, Hui Yu nodded his head and returned to his body. All the elders had surrounded him, as though they wanted to stop him from going anywhere. Student Hui Yu! An ancient voice said. Hui Yu turned around, looking at the academy chairman. A small bow was given to him. You killed your fellow student, Li Xing. What do you have to say in your defense? The academy chairman seemed displeased with the outcome. He was perfectly aware that Hui Yu had no other choice than to end the battle when he had. He only had enough qi for one attack. If he had run out of Qi, Li Xing would have killed him instead. I really had no choice, Hui Yu shamelessly said as he looked at the old man. I had just broken through to the disciple rank, and my strength was unsteady. How was I to know that Senior Li Xing was unable to defend against my attack? He rushed towards me, and I got scared. I had no other option. The blue eyes, which had been ice cold and filled with killing intent, were now big and adorable. The boy in front of the chairman looked as though he was being bullied, as if he had never done anything wrong. Many of the students felt like vomiting blood as they saw the innocence and naivety on his face, yet everything he said made perfect sense. Hui Yu had fought the entire fight while being a whole realm below his opponent, and only at the end did he break into the disciple rank. It was evident that the one who should have died was Hui Yu. What this young boy had accomplished was nothing short of a miracle. If he had not gone all out, it would have been completely impossible for him to win. 
That Li Xing died was regrettable, yet it was obvious that he was a commoner-born student who had been lucky to find a good martial arts skill within the martial arts skill hall at the academy. Losing him was a great loss, yet having a whole tournament with no fatalities was almost impossible. Sparring with each other was the same as showing off their abilities. These abilities were all created for the sake of killing. The majority of the geniuses in the younger generation would not live long enough to reach adulthood. A sigh escaped the chairman as he waved his hand, instantly motioning the murmuring people to quiet down. It is unfortunate that student Li Xing passed away just as the tournament was ending. The winner this year is student Hui Yu. As soon as the message had been relayed, the old man turned around and started walking away. He had to rush back to the office and send a message informing the royal family right away. Not only the chairman, but every major clan and family within Reloa City was thinking the same thing. Every one of them wished to get in good graces with this unknown youth. Although geniuses were unlikely to survive for long, he seemed to be the one who could turn the world upside down, and it was a gamble that every family would take. These families actually did not care if the child survived in the long run. What they wanted was to get their hands on the high-rank martial arts skills that were currently in his possession. It seemed that he had perfected at least some of them, and anything he had perfected was something which he could then pass on to others. Hui Yu was, after all, only a ten-year-old boy. Although he might be capable of killing in cold blood, these families all assumed that he was not trained in scheming. This was why they wanted to get their hands on these high-rank martial arts skills. Suddenly the thoughts and the clamor around the arena focused on the martial arts skills that had been sold half a year earlier, and a sudden silence appeared. For a student of this age, it was obvious that he needed to have a teacher of some kind. This teacher, in turn, could not be a normal cultivator for him to have passed along such incredible martial arts skills and ensured that the youth had perfected them at such a young age. Was the saint-ranked expert who had moved through the town half a year earlier perhaps Hui Yu's master? Chapter 47 Keep My Secret Following the end of the tournament, Hui Yu went back to his courtyard. There he locked himself inside, refusing to see almost all of the many guests. The only guests seen entering into the genius's courtyard were the manager of the black market auction house and a messenger from the city lord's mansion. Usually an outstanding genius such as Hui Yu would be a target for assassination as soon as he had chosen a faction. Even though he clearly had chosen to ally himself with Lord Rong Liang, no one dared to make a move against him as they all feared his unknown master. Throughout the next few months, many invitations were sent to Hui Yu inviting him to visit the various nobles of Reloa City. Each and every one of these invitations was declined. He even refused the ones who invited him to the city lord's mansion and the Ma family compound. This refusal to accept invitations, in turn, caused the Wang family to feel as though Hui Yu might not have been ensnared by the other side. He had shown face to the two families as repayment for them purchasing the martial and spiritual attack skills which the expert Li Fen had sold. Life at the academy had changed drastically for Hui Yu. Just as he left his courtyard, he noticed a person waiting outside for him. A deep sigh escaped Hui Yu's lips as he looked at the small figure in front of him. Wang Zhulong's hair had grown long and was tied at the top of her head. She was wearing a beautiful black robe on her snow-white skin. The fabric fluttered around her fragile figure as the wind picked up. Hui Yu slapped himself mentally. How could he ever have thought Wang Zhulong was a man? Thinking about it this way made his handsome face turn grim. His feelings were the exact opposite of the ones Rong Ming had felt the fateful day all those years back. Some things were better left unexplored. Why do you wait for me every day? Hui Yu asked dejectedly. He knew there was no way to escape this neighbor of his without her seeing him. 
He had tried multiple times, yet somehow she always managed to find him within mere seconds. In the end, Hui Yu had just given up and allowed the woman to turn into his stalker. This change had caused multiple students within the Royal Academy to loathe Wang Zhu Long. These students all saw her as someone who previously hated Hui Yu, but now tried to suck up to him as he had shown his actual potential. Unlike most people, Wang Zhu Long paid absolutely no heed to the talk of others. She proudly stood next to Hui Yu. She never spoke, just observed him quietly. Her sharp eyes always made the white-haired boy feel slightly uncomfortable. This caused him to hardly leave his courtyard. Often he would barricade himself inside, hoping to get just a sliver of privacy. I need to keep an eye on you, Wang Zhulong answered while her cheeks flushed pink. I cannot afford for you to tell anyone my secret. Hui Yu had asked this same question multiple times. Although the answer never changed, Wang Zhulong's attitude had changed throughout the months. At first she had been very proud and aloof, but day after day she softened up. She had transformed into the blushing girl who was currently standing in front of him. Another sigh escaped Hui Yu's lips as he started making his way towards the classroom. It was now time to choose another subject for the remainder of the year. A naive hope sprung into being within Hui Yu. He could choose a topic that Wang Zhu Long didn't pick. She will definitely choose the same as you, Lan Feng said with a dry voice, bursting the bubbly feeling of happiness which had started to grow within Hui Yu. A sour expression filled his face as he knew that the bird within him was right. It was evident that Wang Zhu Long would follow him no matter what subject he chose. Knowing this, Hui Yu had picked the subject which focused on qi refining and eventually decided to skip out of all the lessons. He stayed in his courtyard to cultivate either alone or with his friends. Having reached the disciple rank, Hui Yu spent a whole month just understanding the changes happening to his body. First were the physical changes. Hui Yu had grown taller and much stronger. His features had gained a slight masculinity. No longer a feminine boy, but now a handsome youth. Although these changes seemed severe, they were nothing compared to what was happening within Hui Yu's body. When Hui Yu forced the final strand of qi out of his body in the fight against Li Xing, he had forcefully pushed his way into the disciple rank. This action caused his body to become like a sponge, greedily sucking up essence from the heavens and the earth. This essence no longer needed Hui Yu to refine it. The cultivation technique which Lan Feng had taught him activated itself and kept circulating the essence until it gained the pearly luster that showed the incredibly pure quality of the qi. His meridians were slightly damaged during the battle. After a few weeks of rest and constant nourishing with qi, they had healed and become even stronger. The biggest change was the qi spiral itself. The spiral had grown to twice its previous size, and a roaring sound could be heard from within it. Not only had the spiral grown, it now spun in the opposite direction as it had originally. Within the qi spiral was a copy of Hui Yu seated with his hands locked in the bird hand seal. This copy of Hui Yu was the cultivation technique, which would continually absorb and refine qi at the highest speed possible, while continuing to keep the purity equal to that qi which had been manually refined. Hui Yu would even further speed up the refinement process if he sat down and cultivated using the same technique. But he no longer needed to worry too much about it, as his copy was keeping itself busy. Another significant change within Hui Yu had his two caverns within the Qi Cave turn into nine caverns. Seven of them were blocked by a misty shield. Hui Yu had no way of breaking past or seeing through this shield. Looking at the two open caverns, Hui Yu had the impression that something was missing. A longing within his soul was calling out. No matter how much Hui Yu contemplated the subject, no answer would appear to ease this longing. Instead, Hui Yu underwent multiple tests with Lan Feng to understand the blood-red mist and the sky-blue cloud. 
The red mist appeared whenever Hui Yu engaged in battle or when danger was close. This red mist slowly enveloped the Qi spiral. It would wrap around the Qi, giving it an overbearing strength, and also helped Hui Yu's senses to sharpen. The Qi affected by the red mist would swell in size, and the previously pearl-white luster would have a faint red hue emitting from within. Hui Yu learned to suppress this red mist with the least possible amount of focus and effort, but his current level was far too low to have any real control over it. He was unable to activate it, and he was even less capable of calming it down within its cave. The blue cloud-like tranquility was much simpler in this aspect. Hui Yu would usually activate the tranquility for the sake of suppressing the killing intent. This cloud activated as soon as his consciousness came into contact with it. Unlike the red mist, the blue cloud emitted its cool and calm energy when traveling throughout his meridians. While being affected by the blue cloud, Hui Yu was capable of calmly understanding and reacting to the things which were happening around him, and his sharpened senses seemed to observe everything around him in slow motion. This tranquil feeling was easy to control. As soon as Hui Yu willed it, the cloud would gather from the meridians and return to the cavern where it calmly waited for the next time Hui Yu summoned it. Another benefit of the blue cloud was the increased rate at which Hui Yu and his cultivation technique could refine qi. Nonetheless, all these benefits had a downside. Every time Hui Yu used either the red mist or the blue cloud, both cloud and mist would slowly diminish in size as the energy was used up. If one energy were used up more than the other, an imbalance would appear within Hui Yu. This caused the opposing energy to leak out and bring Hui Yu to the state of a killing frenzy, or a state of aloof tranquility. When the two caverns were completely empty as a result of Hui Yu using up all his energy, it would then take a full month before the cloud and the mist could be restored to their original sizes. Whatever fueled these two unknown phenomena was something about which Hui Yu had absolutely no idea. Even Lan Feng could not seem to figure it out. He spent hour after hour in front of the caverns, observing the two contrasting forces. One day, Lan Feng sighed, one day when you are stronger we will be able to get an answer to what these are and their causes. What about the other caves? Hui Yu asked curiously as he looked at the sealed entrances to the other caverns. Nothing was visible from within, nor was any feeling of energy being emitted out. They were thoroughly sealed. They'll open when it is time for them to open, Lan Feng said with little care in the world. For this ancient phoenix, everything that had happened was exciting and new to him. It brought excitement and great promises concerning Hui Yu's future. The winter was turning into spring, with beautiful flowers that sprouted from the cold soil. Soon the snow would be melting, with the sun rising into the sky, allowing for spring to turn into summer. It had now been almost a year since Hui Yu arrived at the academy. It was time for the Rong's yearly trip to the magical forest. This year you must come with us, Rong Ming said with a big smile on his face. We are going to go without the guards this year, since the two of us have broken into the rank of practitioner. Perhaps we can even invite the others and have a fun trip together. To hear Rong Ming speaking about the magical forest as a place to play around caused Hui Yu to chuckle slightly. Although he did agree that it would be a good idea for the six of them to go together. If they were all together, it should be possible to survive as long as they did not wander too far into the forest. Hui Yu felt some excitement grow within his heart as he realized he could visit his parents for the first time in a whole year. Although Hui Yu had been born with the mentality of a twenty-four-year-old, he also knew that he was cared for deeply by his new parents. Hui Li Fen had done her very best as his mother. Even though they were poor, Hui Yu had always had everything he needed. Hui Yu also valued his father deeply, 
yet there was nothing in this world quite like the love of a mother. It was one thing to which Huiyu looked forward to experiencing once again. Another thing which Huiyu looked forward to was finally allowing his friends to see from where he came. So far, only the wrong twins were aware of his humble background. Although he had informed Gao Yan, Ma Kong, and Deng Wu about his family, they all expected to see feral men who fought magical beasts daily. They expected to see a wild tribe who were living in savage lands. The truth was far from their expectations. Every time Hui Yu tried to correct their impressions, none of them would listen to him. Eventually, he had completely given up on trying, and instead decided to show them. These five youths were the ones Hui Yu would entrust with his deepest secrets and his most sensitive information. Chapter 48 They Are Back after having reached the disciple rank, as well as having his cultivation technique evolve into a copy of himself, Hui Yu's speed of refining qi was many times quicker than it had ever been before. The wrong twins, on the other hand, had not managed to progress as smoothly. Because their qi was of lower purity, it had only broken through a few stars during the final half-year. Rong Ming had broken into the two-star practitioner rank, while Rong Jing was now a three-star practitioner. Both of the twins relied heavily on Hui Yu's unlimited supply of medicinal pills. They ate qi refining pills as though they were candy. These pills allowed for the just above average purity of their qi to turn pearl white. Although it lacked luster and shine, it still was more than enough to allow them to break into the master rank later on. Although Hui Yu's cultivation technique was nothing like he had ever experienced before, it still did not compare to the one Gao Yan was using when it came to cultivation speed. Gao Yan's cultivation technique, much like Hui Yu's, relied on one of the zodiacs. This specific technique sacrificed some purity for rapid advancement. Yet the purity of Gao Yan's technique was still considered high when compared to the average cultivator's results of this world. Relying on this cultivation technique, Gao Yan spent the final half-year absorbed in constant cultivation, which led to him breaking into the practitioner rank after such a short time. Seeing that Gao Yan had managed to pass the entire student rank within such a few short months caused Hui Yu almost to vomit blood. His ten years of hard work suddenly seemed as though they had been wasted. Had it not been for the slight difference in purity of their qi pools, Hui Yu would have spent time figuring out a way to beat up Lan Feng for introducing him to such a slow and painstaking technique. Ma Kong managed to reach the nine-star disciple rank within these months. He had been gifted with a box of medicinal pills by Hui Yu in the hope of helping him break through to the practitioner rank before the lot of them set out towards the magical forest. Officially, Deng Wu was also at the nine-star disciple rank, and he had been gifted a box of mixed pills. Some were qi congregating pills, while others were qi refining pills. While everyone expected Deng Wu to be breaking into the practitioner rank, he was in fact on the verge of breaking into the master rank. He would be the first among them all to turn into a cultivator who could unlock the middle dungeon. Hui Yu had reached the third star of the disciple rank, and during this period he had perfected transforming weapons sword style. Although Hui Yu had perfected the sword style, it was impossible for him to be compared to a sword master. His skills were not bad, and he continually improved by training with the sword movements that he had been taught in his previous life. Hui Yu had no intention of training more weaponry skills, Yet after hearing that the six of them were to enter the magical forest together, he quickly picked up transforming weapons bow style. One day had taken another, and suddenly the trip was about to commence. Hui Yu had gone to Reloa City in search of the necessities that he would need for such a long journey. His first stop was a high-end memory stone store. Hui Yu purchased two large-capacity memory stones. These large-capacity memory stones were the size of a fist, but their weight was as light as a feather. Each stone was embedded within a small pouch, which was created to be hung on a belt to allow for swift access. 
Hui Yu quickly hung one of these memory stone pouches on his belt before he continued his shopping expedition through town. One memory stone was quickly filled with meat of all varieties, fresh, cured, salted, and smoked. Sacks of grain and wheat were stored in large quantities, with some of it barley and rice. Fabrics of various qualities followed the food, and finally some drinks were added, rice wine, barley beer, and fruit wines. At the very end of his shopping, Hui Yu entered a bank where he purchased a coin-storing memory stone, into which he placed three thousand gold coins, as they were by far easier to use than spirit coins. Then he deposited the coin memory stone into the first memory stone he had purchased. This stone was then stored within the memory stone inside the pouch that Hui Yu had placed on his belt. A content smile appeared on his face. The first stone he had filled up was a present to his family and the village. Although Hui Yu had been away from home for a long time, he still knew where his home was. Using the money he had gained from Lan Fang, plus adding to it the cash from the Deng family, Hui Yu felt that this memory stone gift was the least he could do for the ones who had spent ten years raising him. Having finished selecting gifts for his family, Hui Yu finally started to pick up items for himself. Unlike his family, he only bought dried food for himself, dried strips of meat, biscuits which were made as rations for the army and could last for a long time, as well as dried fruits and berries. Since Hui Yu was allowed to buy his own drinks, the first thing he bought was a canteen so that he could store water on his trip. Apart from that, he bought quite a few bottles of fruit wine and weaker types of alcohol. Food was not the only thing Hui Yu prepared. Blankets were purchased, enough to cover every one of his friends. Those, together with some blankets so large that they could be used to create a tent for them to sleep under, were also purchased, should the warm and cloud-free weather not last. A wide array of tools was bought. Some of these tools were for the sake of starting a fire, should Hui Yu run out of chi, making him unable to use fire spark. Other tools purchased included those for cooking or digging. Rope was bought together with a hammer and some nails. Although Hui Yu knew that the majority of these things would not be needed, he also knew that it was best to plan for any eventuality. He packed anything which he would usually have taken on a camping trip in his old world. Packing as though he had no cultivation base caused his storage memory stone to be completely filled with things. Yet Hui Yu had no regrets. He would rather be safe than sorry. Just as Hui Yu was on his way back to the academy, he was stopped by Ma Kong, who came rushing towards him. Everyone had gone shopping for their own items, and they had planned to meet up at the East City Gate in Riloa two days from now. Hui Yu! Ma Kong called in a high-pitched voice, uneasy as his heart was beating erratically. The old manager has asked if you would like to dine with us tonight, he continued as he caught his breath slightly. You still have not met the other elders of our family, and they have a gift to give you as a token of appreciation for introducing us to the concept of insurance. Hearing this, Hui Yu chuckled slightly. Although the Ma family was grateful for the insurance business idea, it was highly likely that they wished for Hui Yu to have a positive attitude towards them due to the secret teacher who was backing him. Not that he actually cared. After contemplating for a few minutes, Hui Yu quickly agreed and followed Ma Kong back to the Ma family compound. On the way, Hui Yu and Ma Kong needed to pass the city lord's mansion. Just as they walked past, Hui Yu felt a shiver run through his body. A feeling of impending danger was upon him, and he quickly looked around as the red mist started to activate within his lower dungeon. With great difficulty, Hui Yu managed to suppress the red mist. He could not help but let out a gasp from his lips as he saw seven black-cloaked men making their way into the city lord's mansion. These seven black-cloaked men spoke to no one, nor did they see anyone. They walked with determined steps, and every servant seemed to rush out of their way. The guards did not stop them. Instead, they instantly opened the mansion gates for them. These seven men were the same ones that Hui Yu had seen almost one year ago when he had sold the two high-ranked attack skills at the black market auction house. The seven men who had tried to surround him, 
but did not fight with him. Ma Kong looked at Hui Yu. It was evident that he noticed the change in the younger boy, but as he saw the coldness flash within the blue eyes, he quickly decided not to say anything. Hui Yu made a mental note to ask Gao Yan to activate his network of beggars and servants within Riloa City. Hui Yu would pay well for any information which was available concerning those seven black-cloaked men. He needed to know if they were here to catch him, or rather to catch the unknown expert that went by the name of Li Fen. Dinner at the Ma family exceeded all expectation. Hui Yu was acting as an adorable and slightly naive eleven-year-old child. All the elders gained a favorable impression of him. The only ones who knew what Hui Yu was truly like were Ma Kong and the manager who had attended the tournament. Neither of these two felt as if they should tell the rest of the elders about this particular trait, as it did not influence their work with the young child. Young Master Hui Yu, the manager said respectfully. Hui Yu was no young master, yet the manager did not know what else to call him, as his importance far exceeded that of a young master. We heard that you are about to embark upon a risk-filled journey with your friends. We would like to gift you an inscribed item to increase your chances of a bountiful harvest. Having said this, the manager clapped his hands, and a servant rushed to his side. In the servant's hands was a pillow. On this pillow was a long and black knife. This knife was made from a black metal which Hui Yu did not know. Upon looking at it, one could tell how incredibly sharp it was. Within the middle of the blade was a circle of some kind, an inscription being lit up with a silvery light. This is a knife created from black iron, the manager said with reverence in his voice. It is inscribed by a duke-ranked metal affinity expert. The inscription ensures for the knife's edge to never dull. It will forever be a sharp weapon, which will take life after life in the hand of a cultivator. Hearing this, amazement arose within Hui Yu. Currently he only possessed one inscribed item, which was the armor that he had won at the tournament. This knife was mesmerizing. Thank you, he said with a muffled voice. Hui Yu's eyes were shining with excitement as he picked up the knife. As he sent his chi inside, he felt a shocking change within his Danchen cave. Chapter 49 Black Blood As soon as Hui Yu grasped the black knife with his hand, the red mist within his Danchen cave instantly started roiling, impossible to suppress any further. Once Hui Yu gave up on suppressing the killing intent, he had expected that it would erupt into the room, sweeping across all the elders present. Yet it did not. All the mist which was rushing out from the cavern within the lower dantian entered his meridians. Then it flowed out of his palm and entered the knife, causing it to feel as though it was an extension of Hui Yu's arm. A red glow appeared on the knife. Everyone within the room could feel just how dangerous Hui Yu had become while wielding the knife. <clears throat> the manager cleared his throat as a shiver ran down his spine. This is our gift to you. Can you think of a name you wish to give this weapon? He asked. Hui Yu furrowed his brows while thinking for a moment. Looking at the black knife with a red hue, a smile appeared on his face. In Hui Yu's mind, only one name would fit such a grand weapon. Black blood, he said with a sinister smile on his face, the previous naive child now nowhere to be seen. This is black blood, the dagger which is dyed black from the seas of blood. Hearing this name gave everyone a foreboding of disaster. This child was in no way normal, yet they did not regret their gift. It was obvious that this dagger was perfect for Hui Yu. A perfect gift would cause happiness, which in turn would allow the young boy to speak highly of them in front of his teacher. The visit had exceeded his expectations. 
Hu Yu had managed to give both the manager and Ma Kong quite a lot of face within the family. Even if the insurance was still a growing business, it had a much bigger chance of becoming their main business focus when they were ready to expand into the other big cities of Taiyong Kingdom. Hu Yu said his goodbyes to the Ma family. Then he rushed back to the inn where he was lodging until it was time for them to set out on their way to the magical forest. Lan Fang, Hui Yu started, curiosity finally overwhelming him as he entered his rented room. I have heard quite a bit about inscriptions lately. Why don't you tell me about them? Lan Fang snorted as he heard the curiosity within Hui Yu's voice. Every elemental affinity has a strength which can be used to craft or create. You already noticed that wood is used for alchemy and healing. You've also seen how the wood affinity is capable of restoring things to their previous appearance. Hui Yu nodded. He did remember how his target dummies would heal themselves due to the wood affinity energy which had been placed within their core. He also remembered how both Gao Yan and Ma Kong had been healed to perfect health with the help of a wood elemental affinity master, but he hadn't spent a lot of time truly considering it before. Metal affinity has the distinct ability to form metals. It also has the capacity to extract the energy within magic cores or beast cores and use this energy to create inscriptions. Lan Feng paused slightly, as if to go through all his memories about inscriptions. Inscriptions can be used in multiple ways, Lan Feng said hesitantly as he recalled the methods. First, it can be used like the one on your armor and the one on the knife, enhancing the items themselves. Second, inscriptions can be used to inscribe some specific spiritual skills that the creator had known, allowing for other cultivators to have an extra attack. Utilizing a special skill through an inscription is slightly weaker than the original attack practiced by the cultivator, but it is beneficial for the user. After hearing this, Hui Yu nodded. Inscriptions seemed to be at least as useful as alchemy, and yet it was not as rare because a dual affinity was not needed. There is also the possibility of inscribing actions or consciousness into items, much like your target dummies, which are capable of reacting to your training. This inscribing is quite hard to learn, as it requires the creator to absorb the soul and instincts of a living magic beast, and then inscribe them within the metal creation. It is considered the pinnacle of the profession and life goal of a metal affinity cultivator. Your second affinity was Earth, right? Hui Yu asked curiously as he leaned back against the wall in the scruffy-looking room he had rented. Yeah, Lan Fang nodded. Earth is simple but strong. Everything within this world relies on the Earth for life, birth, Stability, death, all three made possible through Earth's elemental essence. We rely on soil for eating. We could not live without the Earth below our feet. It is what gives everything life. Without Earth, we would have nothing. Since I could not get wood affinity, I have to admit that Earth is the one I wanted next. If you control Earth, you control life itself. Upon controlling life, death, too, is within your grasp. Hui Yu felt excited upon hearing this. After the soul fusion, Hui Yu now had a part of Lan Feng's soul, which meant that he, too, had an affinity for Earth and fire. His affinity was much weaker than that of Lan Feng's, but it was still present. It was something which could increase his strength tremendously later on. 
When you have a wood elemental affinity, you can control the timing of plants, helping them to sprout and grow, or wither and die. As a wood elemental cultivator, one has to work with plants which are at a minimum seeds before they are capable of injecting their spiritual power into seed or plant. Lan Feng paused for a moment before continuing. Earth is different. Every plant is born from the earth. Every stone and mountain grew from the soil. With an earth elemental affinity, you can create something from nothing. Your spiritual energy allows for you to create seeds from the soil, sprout mountains from the ground, or control the ground on which humankind stands. Hearing these words that Lan Fang said caused Hui Yu's heart to race within his body. Before, he had not thought too highly of the earth, but after hearing this, he could not help but feel a shiver run through his entire body. He had severely underestimated the earth elemental affinity. The earth is sacred, Lan Feng continued as he felt Hui Yu's reaction. All energy is split between the heavens and the earth. To have earth as an affinity is a gift sent from the heavens, which allows for easier comprehension of the secrets of the deities. The secrets of the deities? Huiyu asked while frowning. This was one thing about which he had never heard. To ascend into immortality, you need to understand the truths of the heavens and the secrets of the earth. But don't rack your little brain too much with things such as this. If you manage to break into the middle dantian within the next couple of years, then we will be satisfied. Hui Yu nodded his head, agreeing to what Lan Feng had said. Within his soul was an unyielding fire burning as he heard about the truths of the heavens and the secrets of the earth. Truth be told, Hui Yu was grateful to Lan Feng. Had Hui Yu stayed within his old world, then his life would have turned into a sad love story. Here he no longer thought about his own misfortune. Yes, Hui Yu had died, but together with death was his rebirth. Hui Yu was walking down his own path. He was paving a cultivation road in front of him which would lead to ascension into immortality. This path was a path much more suited for him than the empty life which had been there before. Deep inside, Hui Yu was grateful to Lan Fang for bringing him here. This cultivation road was what Hui Yu was born to do. This was the road he wished to walk. The strong determination was evident in his eyes as he slowly closed them and sat down, forming the bird seal with his hands. Then he submerged himself into his dungeon cave, where he kept refining essence into qi. The following day, as Hui Yu was about to leave the inn, he suddenly ran into Deng Wu. This time his friend invited him to dine with the Deng family, their invitation much the same as the Ma family, but they also had another agenda with this visit. Welcome to the Deng family, Deng Zhang Ying said as he sat in the family leader's chair within their main hall, greeting Hui Yu. The Deng family had summoned Hui Yu as he was the closest anyone could get to the esteemed expert that had appeared almost a year ago. The Deng family owed this expert an incredible amount of gratitude. Not only had this expert given them plenty of face, which had improved their standing within the city, but she had also given them the blueprints of water mills, which had allowed their business's profits to increase substantially. Half a year ago, this expert gave another gift to the Deng family. She gifted Deng Wu with two high-ranked martial arts skills. This fact was known by all the elders of the family. Truthfully, these skills had been gifted to Deng Wu by Hui Yu, but it was not something which Deng Wu could tell his family. The wrong twins, Ma Kong and Gao Yan, had all hidden the secret that they had gained high-ranked skills from Hui Yu. However, the situation with the Deng family was slightly different. After talking it over, Hui Yu and Deng Wu decided that because the Deng family knew about the relationship between Li Fen and Deng Wu, along with their knowledge of his actual cultivation base, 
they chose to tell them about the skills. Knowing about the skills didn't change anything. Deng Wu still had not perfected either. He was therefore unable to store it within memory stones to save as family heirlooms. Still, having a son within the Deng family practicing two high-ranked martial arts skills, albeit secretly, would help pave the road for their future, and also count as another valuable pawn within the hands of Deng Zanying. Standing in front of Deng Zanying and the eight elders of the Deng family, Hui Yu felt a certain amount of pressure, yet nothing could be seen on his small and naive face as he bowed deeply to all of them, greatly pleasing the elder generation. It is my honor to be invited. My master ordered me to bring her best wishes, Hui Yu said politely, ignoring the grumbling bird within his danchen that mumbled something along the lines of, I never said anything of wishing anything for such a minor family. Hearing these words caused all the people present, elders and juniors alike, to be astonished. This reference was the first time wherein Hui Yu had acknowledged Li Fen to be his teacher. As to why he had decided to reveal this was something about only which Hui Yu and Deng Wu knew. Getting such sudden information caused the Deng family to feel once again as if they had the upper hand when it came to gaining favor with the elusive expert, and they instantly decided to keep this knowledge a secret. A smile protruded on Deng Zanying's face as he waved his hand and called forth a servant much the same way the Ma family had done the previous day. Unlike the Ma family, the Deng family did not produce some weapon or armor. Instead, they brought forth a white jade case, which was sealed with a small red ribbon. This ribbon had a pattern on it. As Hui Yu focused his eyes, he was shocked to notice that the entire ribbon was filled with inscriptions. This can't be, Lan Feng said as he stirred within the Danjin cave. This is a gift we wish to give your master as a thank you for assisting us as much as she has. Deng Ying said as he stood up and headed down the stairs to stand on the same level as Hui Yu. His hands picked up the jade case with great care and moved towards Hui Yu. The spiritual energy started to fluctuate around Deng Ying's hands, and it was obvious that he was circulating his energy. After a few minutes a click could be heard, and from within the case a strong spiritual aroma wafted out, filling the entire room. Within the case, a small white flower was visible. This flower was as white as Hui Yu's chi, with a small blazing sun in the middle, and drops of shining liquid falling from the petals. The flower was only a flower, no stalk or any other way to gain nutrients, yet even still it showed no signs of withering any time soon. To think that they had something like this! Lan Feng said, shocked, and Hui Yu felt the greed, astonishment, and shock reverberating within his soul. This hit Lan Feng hard. Chapter 50 Divine Flowers What is this? Hui Yu quietly asked Lan Feng as he looked at the stunning flower in front of him. Somehow the feeling he received from the flower caused the blue cloud within his Danchen cave to bubble with excitement. Hui Yu secretly rejoiced with his decision of allowing these people to know about Li Fen being his master. In this world, there are some plants which are capable of cultivating, Lan Feng stated breathlessly. These plants are the ones considered medicinal herbs— Plants which absorb the essence from the heavens and the earth to increase their own cultivation. When a plant like this absorbs the essence from the heavens and the earth, it will naturally become stronger, which is seen by how the effect of these specific herbs becomes multiplied. This is also why older plants are much more beneficial than younger sprouts. Hearing this, Hui Yu was almost about to nod as this was information he had been given previously. All these medicinal plants are material plants, which sprout from seeds left behind by the same type of plant. They are all able to cultivate, 
But they are nothing like the plant in front of you, Lan Feng said, awestruck. This is a divine flower, Lan Feng finally said after a small break, but he did not get the time to continue to conversation. The two of them were still within the Deng family's main hall, and all the Deng family members were looking at the dumbstruck facial expression which was spread across Hui Yu's face. Oh, I am sorry, Hui Yu quickly said. The shock which had previously been on his face was now completely sealed behind a perfect poker face. I was astonished by the beauty and aura of such a flower. I have never seen anything like it. Hui Yu continued while praising the beautiful flower in front of him. Currently, Hui Yu was capable of making an oath to the heavens and earth that he did not know what the flower in front of him was, so he had no fear of playing the role of an unknowing boy. This was a beautiful flower which has been in our treasury since the first generation of our family. No one has found anything particular about it, yet its beauty is outstanding. Deng Zhang Ying said while smiling towards the child in front of him, fully believing Hui Yu. In fact, everyone within the main hall fully believed Hui Yu when he said that he was astonished by the beauty. Everyone except Deng Wu and this particular young man had a knowing smirk on his face. He was feeling grateful that the item they were giving to Hui Yu had some actual usage. This is a gift which we hope your teacher will like. Deng Zhang Ying continued, and with a strand of spiritual energy he managed to reseal the box. Anyone who possesses spiritual energy will be capable of opening this box, he explained as Hui Yu bowed deeply in front of him. I am sure your teacher will value it. Hearing this, Hui Yu could only silently agree. He could feel the waves of excitement clash into his soul from Lan Fang's, their mental connection filled with happiness and excitement. The following meal was eaten in a side building next to the main hall. Hui Yu was seated next to Dang Wu. The entire meal was a long trial for the young boy. Everyone at the table used the time to talk disparagingly about Dang Wu. They intentionally degraded him, as they were unaware that Hui Yu knew his actual cultivation level. What Hui Yu quickly noticed was that the elders were clearly not used to degrading Deng Wu. Obvious discomfort was shown by their expressions whenever they attempted to do so. Although Deng Wu's own father, Deng Zhang Ying, was insulting him and calling him trash with no qualms whatsoever. At first, Hui Yu had considered it odd, but had brushed it away with thinking that Deng Zhang Ying was a great actor. Yet after half an hour, it was evident that he enjoyed trashing his son. Hui Yu could not help but be amazed that none of the elders seemed to understand the family head's true feelings. Hui Yu had looked at Deng Wu, wondering if he were to comment on the obvious hostility from his father. Yet the older boy shook his head ever so slightly. It was evident that this was a family affair, something he would deal with on his own. The meal was finished with a feeling of impatience on Hui Yu's side. He smiled and chatted with everyone, yet his biggest wish was to rush back to the inn to hear more about the divine flower. Could it be a flower which had reached deity from cultivation? A specific type of flower that could cultivate much stronger than any other cultivator? No matter how much Hui Yu thought, he couldn't get any closer to an answer. Lan Feng was completely quiet within the Danjin Cave. The only things which betrayed his presence were feelings of joy and excitement as they flooded Hui Yu's soul. To make a saint-ranked divine beast show such attention towards it, it definitely was an immense treasure. If the Deng family knew about this, it was obvious that they would not have gifted it to anyone, not even an esteemed expert. Slowly the sky turned dark outside, and the moon rose above the Deng family compound. Hui Yu said his goodbyes and slowly slipped back to his inn. The day had been filled with rewards for Hui Yu. First, the divine flower, which he still did not know enough about, and second was the knowledge about Deng Wu's background. Seated in the inn, Hui Yu looked at the jade box within his hands, and waited patiently for Lan Feng to start speaking. 
Last time I saw a divine flower was in the dungeons of the divine. Lan Feng sighed his remembrances of the past, leaving Hui Yu at a loss. What were the dungeons of the divine? Do you remember what I told you about medicinal plants? Lan Feng asked first, and a satisfied harumph could be heard when he felt the knowledge re-emerge within Hui Yu's mind. Those plants are born from seeds which have been left by their ancestors, much like humans are born from other humans. Some flowers are born from nothing. Lan Feng paused slightly. These flowers are born from seeds created by the essence between the heavens and the earth. In areas where there is an abundant essence, this essence will gather into a seed which it will nourish until it sprouts and turns into a flower. The petals are made from chi, the drops are refined spiritual energy, the blazing sun is wu wei. A flower like this one will never die as long as it is in an area with essence from the heavens and the earth. Instead, it will be nourished into a great treasure. But what does it do? Hui Yu asked curiously while he looked at the flower with newly found astonishment. You eat it, Lan Feng said directly. You eat it and absorb the energies within. In the middle of this flower, currently submerged in the shining energy known as Wu Wei, is the seed from which it sprouted. We need you to absorb this seed and place it in your chi swirl. If it is there, it will attract the essence from the heavens and the earth, allowing your cultivation technique to refine chi even faster than it already does. Hearing this, Hui Yu could not help but gape in astonishment. This was indeed an immense treasure, yet he wondered why no one within the Deng family had tried to eat it before. It is obvious, Lan Feng said with a sigh as he felt the confusion. Do you remember how I previously told you that if you eat a beast core, it will do you no good, absorbing all the chi you have spent your time refining? Hui Yu nodded. He had heard this many years ago. It was one thing that he had not forgotten. Eating a beast core was one thing which Hui Yu would never do. This is a great treasure, but it could be like the beast core. Once eaten, it would have taken the cultivation base of the cultivator who ate it. Since there was only one flower, they could not test it on lower-ranked family members, as the flower would be wasted on them. Even such an immense treasure has pros and cons when it comes to figuring out what it can do. A thoughtful expression appeared on Hui Yu's face. Had he not been told to eat the flower, then he would never have thought of it, especially not after knowing what happens when one eats a beast core. Most medicinal plants are refined, so one would expect that this was one which should be refined as well. After hearing that it was a flower which was created from qi, spiritual energy, and wu wei, Hui Yu understood that it was unable to be refined like other medicinal plants. Still, he would not have thought of eating it, much like he was now. So, what are you waiting for? Lan Feng said with an excited voice, clearly impatient to see his friend eat the flower. A goofy smile appeared on Hui Yu's lips, and he allowed his consciousness to form a mental projection of himself as he moved within the Danchen Cave towards Lan Feng. Lan Feng was holding one drop of spiritual energy within his hands, the drop which was needed to open the jade case in which the flower was being held. Slowly, Hui Yu allowed for this one drop of spiritual energy to travel through his meridians and slowly exit his hand, dripping down onto the ribbon which was used to close the case. A click could be heard as the ribbon untied itself and the case slowly opened, which allowed for the heavy energy to start wafting out. Hui Yu's heartbeat became erratic as the heavy energy filled his room, 
and he picked up the flower with shaking hands. He noticed how the energy which was being emitted from the flower instantly rushed in through his meridians, cleansing them on the way before arriving in the Danchen Cave. It was then picked up by the Huiyu copy which was created by the cultivation technique. Astonishment filled Huiyu's eyes. He slowly lifted the flower to take one final look at the beautiful flower, before he slowly placed it within his mouth. Energy exploded within Huiyu's mouth, quickly flowing through blood vessels, meridians, muscles, and bones. It flowed throughout his entire body. Huiyu felt that whatever the energy touched, the body became purified. After a few seconds, sweat began to appear all over his body, quickly followed by a black steam of all the impurities that were being removed by the divine flower. The petals, which were created by Qi, disintegrated slowly within Huiyu's mouth and throat, then split into threads of pure Qi. Looking at this, Huiyu finally became serious as his mental projection slowly welcomed all the new Qi strands. He picked up some of his own refined Qi threads and merged them, only to heave a big sigh of relief. Having different purities of qi would cause an imbalance within the qi cave. Usually this ended in severely injuring the cultivator, not to mention causing the martial arts skills to become unstable. Upon looking at these qi threads, they were a perfect match to Hui Yu's own threads. Having spent so much time on cultivating these threads, paid off finally. Hui Yu allowed the qi threads which kept floating in from the flower to fill up the qi swirl within his qi cave. Thread after thread joined the qi spiral and allowed for it to grow to an immense size. Strength filled the young boy, and astonishment filled his eyes as he felt the strength of his entire body shaking. He was breaking through into the fourth star of the disciple rank.